um on actually a positive story this cbs news story here talking about violence in schools um it's like i mean of course we're seeing a rise in extremist violent rhetoric from the right school shootings as you mentioned brandon um there's a lot of uh, and has been for a while a, a concerted effort by the right wing to over police schools and to arrest kids who may be misbehaving in schools and of course that disproportionately falls on black and brown and low income areas um in Shreveport, Louisiana, though, they're trying something a little bit of different. These This group of dads organized a crime intervention group in order to prevent police intervention. And CBS covered this. It, it's pretty cool. Let's, let's take a watch. Listen slash watch. <laughs> Not many good news stories begin in such a bad news way. It happened last month here at Southwood High School in Shreveport, Louisiana. Plagued with violence. Over the course of three days, another fight. 23 students arrested for fighting. Massive police response. But strangely, there hasn't been another incident since. Perhaps in part because of this most unusual crisis intervention team. Nobody here has a degree in school counseling. No majors in criminal justice. No, no. Your qualifications are? Well, Dad, yeah. we decided the best people who can take care of our kids are who? Are us. So Michael Lafitte started Dads on Duty. We're out doing what we do for our babies. A group of about 40 Southwood dads who now hang out at the school in shifts. Let's go. Today, any negative energy that enters the building has to run a gauntlet of good parenting. What's going on, buddy? You moving fast. I like that horse. I immediately felt a form of safety. We stopped fighting. People started going to class. How could that be? You ever heard of a look? A look? Dads it's have just... the power to do that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> not many people know it, but yes. <laughs> let's go, let's go. But it's not just the firm stares and stern warnings. Let's make it to class, my son. It's also the dad jokes. <laughs> they just make funny jokes like, oh, hey, your suit is untied, but it's really not untied. <laughs> and they hate it. They're so embarrassed by it. <laughs> and it's that perfect mix of tough love and gentle ribbing that dads do so well that has helped transform this school. The school has really just been like happy and you can feel it. Which is why the dads plan to keep coming to Southwood indefinitely. Because not everybody mm -hmm. has the father, the father figure at home. Mm -hmm. Or a male period in their life. Like so that. just to be here makes a big difference. Do you think you stumbled onto something here? Absolutely. I think absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. I have a good morning. They'd like to start chapters of Dads on Duty throughout Louisiana. What's up, baby boy? And hope to eventually take on the country. All right. Without a fight. <laughs> Steve Hartman, on the road, in Shreveport, Louisiana. How much? All right, putting aside the, like, corny way that these nightly news broadcasts frame these things and, and say this, I mean, how wholesome is that? How wonderful is that? And... How unfortunate is it that we have to have volunteer dads as opposed like as the only alternative to cops because our schools are so underfunded and there isn't like this ability to treat kids like kids. Well, that's the thing is like the framing. It's like it's like you don't have a degree in this. You don't have a degree in that as if like what's keeping uh, dads out of the, out of the schools is P, sort of professional middle class qualificationism or something like that. But really they're after work like right like if. I don't think any school would really be against this sort of thing. I think the, the obvious um, benefits, like, I don't think it's that surprising. But why doesn't this happen more often? It's because dads have to work. And yeah. obviously, we also know the uh, mass incarceration thing. I wonder what happened to those 23 students that were arrested in the like weeks leading up to this. But like, hopefully, like, they're allowed back into school and see how the, this works with them, too. But, like um that that that's the problem right like why w dads ha like we're we can't do we can't they can't be there because they have to work so you want it, you can start all these chapters but like are you going to be able to have volunteer dads or are they going to they're going to be like leaving money on the table i mean it's sweet that they want to start the chapters right i like, think it's great it's i think it's great. absolutely great but we don't have a society that um enables this yeah it it, it can't last for a reason because one they're not getting paid their valent volunteers and two because like it, it, it's just not sustainable when your your parents have to work but it 
it shows what could be possible if we had like a non-carceral approach to uh, non-white, non-wealthy kids in in like misbehaving in school and funded our education. Well, I mean, I think that's what I got from it most. The idea that the credentialism that, you know, they, you know, he kind of joking him, we questioned them about, you know, to sort of set that dad joke was, you know, is serious in the sense that like who you know we how we decide who has an expertise in like maintaining order in these schools and what these kids need are largely results of like this sort of neoliberal project of school to prison pipeline and so putting more uh, more cops in schools you know being harsher on juvenile de of defendants for like fighting or whatever is part of an actual system meant to like enrich private prison owners and so like you know we have to challenge the very idea that what's right for our students and our kids is something that can only be determined by people with criminal justice backgrounds or you know to your local cop <laughs> or, you know, some uh, person from outside of the community who has some sort of like a theoretical degree in education, but isn't necessarily able to root that in like, the, like that one dad said, some people here don't have uh, parents at home and they need a sort of father figure in order to like, you know, feel like they're being supported. Maybe some people don't need that. Some people do. Uh, but when we could think about what looks, what our education or school reform system looks like, it's very geared towards curriculum, very geared towards punitive and like assessment tests, as opposed to like actually trying to supplement any things that, that kids aren't getting at home in a way to make a more, you know, holistic uh, learning environment that's supportive. So, I mean, I'm glad about that. You know, obviously the problems that exist outside the school are gonna affect it, but, you know, just challenging this idea that the best people for like deciding what's right for kids is cops and uh you know the board of education and not necessarily parents or community members uh is you know in some ways good and in some ways leads to the uh you know sort of anti-max anti-mask uh, protesters but you know people getting involved in local politics in some ways maybe they'll just be a school board thing a school board initiative yeah, I mean, and I think this has to be seen in the context of everyone from Tucker Carlson to Joe Rogan shitting on parental leave as if it's some sort of category error mm. that like parental leave, isn't that for moms or something like this, it, that all of this stuff fundamentally and the same reason why the one thing left in the um, Build Back Better thing was pre-K is because it helps mom and dad get their ass back to serving the capitalist. And um, I think that fundamentally, like, we're not going to be able to solve these things unless we... Um, uh, put get pe lessen that um, sort of uh, motivation for people that they have to go work for a boss. Absolutely, and you know, I guess optimistically, I would say like showing maybe this is just a part of the get that grassroots way to really emphasize that people mm -hmm. need to fight more and be more proactive in holding people accountable because family leave will have these kinds of benefits. You know, you guys sometimes you know. Yep. Not that electoralism works, but, you know, the best way to get people invested in change is to show them the positive impacts and then show them like, yeah, it's being held from you by people who are telling you that, oh, no, it's way better for your kids if you're at work and you're working from like eight in the morning till eight at night and can barely see them as opposed to like when you're able to take a direct role in their schooling and able to like have the freedom of uh, flexibility of schedule to be actually involved. And if not you, at least some other parents are able to do that and shift. Absolutely. But that's that's not the manly thing to do. The manly thing is to not be uh, seen with your children whatsoever. Just, uh, you, you, you know, know don't... you know, my opinion on babies. I, I just expressed it very coherently last week. So, I mean, I don't think, you know, anyone is harder on babies than I am, except for, of course, our government. Uh, but, you know, but for them, you know, me, I'm a, not close second, but I'm a distant second. <laughs>